Hello! And welcome to episode 222. All the twos. Right, for this video guys, I've come to a venue I've only ever fished once before. It was pretty much about five years exactly when I was here and it's a complex just outside of Gloucester called Elton Carp Lakes or Elton Carp and Cat Lakes because there are catfish in here as well. That video five years ago, which was actually by coincidence, All The Ones, episode 111. If you're not seeing that one, I'll put a little uh, link in the description. But I was on the other lake. They've got two lakes here, a little intimate lake called the Barn Lake. But the lake I'm on for this session is um, like a big horseshoe shaped lake. Um, I'm here for 48 hours. Uh, I'm on my own at the moment, but later on I'm going to be joined by Keith and Ginge. We haven't seen them since March. Don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But their pegs are going to be to my left. So I'm not actually fishing yet. I'm still kind of setting up gear at the moment and getting uh, uh, sorted. Uh, the design of the lake is not very wide. And in fact, what I've brought with me is uh, my chorus uh, baiting pole. And I just had a bit of a test play with it and by luck or coincidence at full stretch it goes exactly right to the tree line on the far side which is uh, 18 meters right anyway guys right I need to crack on at least get fish out I'm more almost ready to start fishing rods are resting on the bank sticks I've just got to sort some rigs out and we're ready to go. I've no idea what time um, Keith and Ginger get in here. I've been here since about midday. Um, not tell I not quite midday, about one o'clock. Had a long chat to the bailiff, Andy. We might have a chat to him later on. So he can tell us a bit about the lake, sort of more detail. But yeah, I'm not short time Keith and Ginger get in here. Anyway, right, I am waffling. Right, let's crack on with this session. Let's go fishing. Right then guys, so just setting up some rigs. Now, because I've only ever visited this venue once before, albeit pretty much five years ago, and I've never actually fished this lake before, was a bit I was coming at them and an hour and about uh, what what rig shall I go for as me kind of me starting gambit. But anyway, I uh, I got chatting to um, a guy called Kev, two swims up, who's um, a regular here and does very well apparently, and he assures me the rig to be on for this venue is fluorocarbon D-rig with a wafter up bait. So that's what I'm setting up. Anyone who ignores local advice is bad angling in my eyes. So I've taken the local advice. That's what I'm doing, setting up a fluorocarbon D rigs. Wafters I'm using is the seafood in white. I haven't actually got many of them, so I might have to be very sparing with them. But um, as, as I said in the intro, I was chatting to the um, the bailiff Andy for quite a while when I got here, and they do do a house bait. Obviously the house bait isn't in this, so I can't use it. But um, the house bait is called the sausage. And it is pretty much a very... Um, he, he let me have a look at it in the little on-site shop that they got here. And um, it's very... Well, 
sausagey, but it, well, I said to him, oh, they've liver in that as well, isn't there? And he went, yeah. So it's a very livery, meaty, garlicky kind of bait is the local, you know, the house bait. F fish meal, it's, I, think it's a, I think it is a fish meal bait. But anyway, the closest I really have got to it, hook bait wise, is the seafood. I haven't got any f freebies in the seafood with me, unfortunately, but um, I've got the beet banana as freebies. So, what wafters I've got on while the last old fish on the on the hair. Bait up with a beaten anna and then we'll we, we see how that goes to start off with. Obviously I've got the baiting pole so I can ship that out right to that kind of far margin tree line. When I first rocked up in this swim a fish did actually bosh out in this swim. I'm sure when Keith and Ginge get here I'm sure they'll probably uh, claim of Nick the best swim. It went in peg 20 by the way. Even though the bailiff did actually tell me peg 22 is the best swim up kind of this end. So, uh, so no, I haven't jumped in the, what apparently is the better swim. So, so I just like the look of this swim a lot better to be fair guys. So, right, anyway. That's the rig sorted, like I said, seafood, dumbbell wafters on the fluorocarbon D-rigs. Uh, got barbed hooks on, but it does say in the rules um, you can use barbed or barbless on this venue. Whatever you're most confident in using. So if you're not confident in using barbed hooks guys, you can use barbless here. And if you don't like barbless, you are allowed to use barbed. So very good on that side of things. Right, that's the rig sorted. Let's get them attached to the rods and actually get them out in the water. So that's it then guys, we are now fishing. So I'd already put two rods out when you saw that rod going out, so obviously that rod we just saw go out was rod number three. Uh, using the pole for all three rods, so, so I can get nice and tight to that tree margin. Uh, obviously the rig's going in there. Putting a little scattering of pellet in there, a few 10 mil boilies, and then some 15 mil crumbed up as well. Uh, just been chatting to Andy at the bailiff again, who was saying he saw where they got dropped and he was saying, yep, they're good spots, so happy with that. Well, I think I'm just hearing Ginge pull up in his van, so, uh, so I'll have some company soon. Right, anyway guys, that's it, we are fishing. 
Oi, I think that's the scallywags turning up now. Well, and here they come. Here's, 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 here comes Dumb and Dumber. Oi, Dumb's behind the flipping camera. Oh. Oh. Top rod again. <laughs> Can I, you, you ready, eh? Yeah, yeah. Oi, right. what's, what's going down then? What's going down? Nothing really. We're just deciding what swim we're going to use. What swim are we going to use? Well, what do you want? Which one do you want? I want that one. Oh, well, that one. I wanted that one as well. You want that one? I'm having that one. <laughs> Alright. Oh, you know, whichever one. You out, Chris, are you? Yeah. Good stuff. Are you now? You're, you're out, out. It's cold. Well, good evening, guys. I'll say good evening. It's not evening, it's 11 o'clock. But, yeah, obviously, all quiet so far. We've just been sat in Keith's swim. All three of us just for a few hours, just chatting a night away, talking rubbish like you do when you're with your fishing buddies. But, uh, yeah, obviously on the fishing side of it, all quiet. I think every rod has a bit had has had a bit of a bleep low, um, but no proper liners or anything, just got a single bleep, so could be anything though to be fair, but it's a single bleep. Uh, uh, anyway, going to snuggle down in a minute, <laughs> try to get warm, <laughs> it's, it's definitely getting to that time of year now where you have to start thinking about the extra layers, that's for sure guys. <laughs> The big puffer coat has come out now. I think mean, it gets much colder. I think the bed chair blanket and the double thick warm socks and that will start coming out soon. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, right, less waffle. I'll hopefully get uh, get to in the night, guys. Obviously, there's three of us here now to potentially put fish into this video so hopefully something will happen guys but if it's any constellation to us I've not heard anyone else's alarms going off so and the bailiff did say to me when I got here Andy was, he did say it's the, the place I've been fishing hard for a couple of weeks so that's fishing that's what makes it a challenge it's why we enjoy it if it was easy, it would soon get boring, wouldn't it? So... <sighs> right. Bed. Hopefully soon tonight, guys. Morning, guys. And obviously, with a lack of nighttime footage, it was a quiet night. What's Ginge doing? You can see Ginge in his swim from where I am. I reckon he's doing a bit of maggot bashing, guys. But anyway, these rods remained more or less silent last night. Say more or less silent. The right hand rod had a bit of a bit of a diddly diddly, diddly with a drop back just before six o'clock this morning. Sort of made me jump up, thinking something might happen. I know it was a drop back because I set all my bobbins to the same height, and the right hand rod now is a bit lower. Right, I can't actually see Keith from where I am. Keith is kind of like in the middle of me and Ginge. So the trees are in the way, so it's 
just pop round there and... Oh, dear me. I'm southwesterly blowing, guys. Right, just wandering down the bank, guys. That's obviously, uh, I did say to the lads, if they have anything in the night, come and wake me up. And you didn't wake me up in the night, so I can presume nothing happened in the night. Nah, Ginch lost one in the margins. That was the only one he had. That's the only thing. A few boshed, but nothing. Not anything. Nothing happened. Right then, as I thought, guys, I mean, it was probably a bit much to expect Keith to have oh, any thinking. <laughs> right. So anyway, I see one of your rods are oh in, and you got another rod down on your chair. What? Doing a bit of maggot bashing as well? Yeah. Well, quite a few maggots on the scene, didn't we? Last time we came down, we had carp off on the float. They didn't touch the feeders or nothing. They didn't touch the bags. So it's worth a try. Right. Let's go and see Ginger and let's see what the story is. With his, uh, with his loss. <laughs> Ciao. Morning, Christopher. How are you? Morning, Carl. How are you doing? Who's Carl? You. I ain't Carl. <laughs> Keith tells me you lost one in the night. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, 12 o'clock. Midnight. Yeah, well, it went from the trees over there, King over here, barbless up, gone. Oh, well, you can use barbed hooks here, you know. Yeah, but barbed hooks are better, isn't it? Well, that's just a matter of opinion. I think you should use barbed every time. So, uh, did a bit of maggot bashing as well? Yeah, I had three birds in one perch so far. Oh, oh, I think you're winning then. Well, let's see that. <laughs> Oh, look at the float, look at the float, look at the float. Hey! Hey! Hey, have another run. Woohoo! Here we go. There's a fish on Chris's vlog. Hey! Film that, it might be the only one. <laughs> Yes, guys. <laughs> it's a bit nippy this morning. I'm actually having a brew. <laughs> you won't see that too often, I tell you. Well, when I say brew, not coffee, not tea, hot chocolate. Doing a nice bacon butty. And then uh, it'd be time to think about what to do this morning. Whether to leave the rods out for now. I ain't gonna change the rigs, obviously I've had some local advice on um you know the rigs that I'm using are, are what work best down here, so I'll stick with the rigs. You know, you can't ignore local advice. I mean, I've put all white hook baits on at the moment. It, it might be just something as simple as the hook baits just might want a change of colour. But I come to that when uh, it's time to wind the rods in for whatever reason. But for now, my bacon is almost ready. Right, 
I'll catch up with you in a while guys when there's something a bit more important to show you other than just some bacon butties. <laughs> Hey guys, I thought I'd give you a quick little update. Although there's not really a lot to update you with. The rods so far this morning haven't been touched. We are now early afternoon, it's kind of just gone after uh, lunchtime. I've just been down to see Keith and Ginge. Keith said he's just put out a zig, because nothing's happening on the bottom. Uh, Ginge I don't think has really changed anything up apart from flavour of hook baits. I'm not sure what he's changed but he has he has changed something along the hook bait lines. I'm not gonna touch my rods and probably till mid afternoon the qualifying for the um during Grand Prix on very shortly so uh, I'll watch that and then probably uh, change something up sort of in a couple of hours time. As I said earlier on, it'd probably just be something as simple as changing the colour of the hook baits. So, but, yeah, still very slow at the moment. But we were warned the fishing was a bit slow before we come here, but just fancied a change of venue basically from Aspen Lake. I mean, I could have easily gone to Aspen Lake this weekend if I wanted to, but the last two videos have been on there. They've both been blanks, carp-wise that is, so just fancy the change of scenery really for this session, guys. And after ringing around a few venues that were very busy and couldn't get on, I managed to find some space here and that's why we ended up here basically, guys. So. Right, anyway, I'm going to go and watch the German qualifying and then I'll uh, get back to you later on. Hopefully this wind will have died down a bit because uh, it's a bit awkward trying to put that pole out with a strong crosswind. Hmm, what's all Keith doing over there with Ginger's rods? I know what them two are like. They're always messing around with each other's tackle. What are you doing, Ginge? Rebait it. And what are you doing? Turn it over there. Um, what are you fishing with? Bait. <laughs> so, are you, you going to tell people what the bait is, or do I have to sh show them? I don't know. You lied about the last time. I never used olives. Get right under that, with that overhang is where you can get the boat right underneath it. Not that way, the other way. Right over that corner of the island. That's it. That's where that. No, further over, further over. Go right under the hanger overhang of that tree. That's where he was. Mm. Further under. Turn, turn left. That's it. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Now. That's it, he's dropped. Lovely, jovely. Oh no. Oh no! What's going on? Have you dropped your load, Ginge? Yeah. Yeah. He's caught in something. What are you caught in? Somebody else is fucking lying. Do you know what? Now I've zoomed into it, I can see it hanging from the tree. Yeah, I can see it on your foot and your roof. Oh, you've got a joke, you've got a bow, ain't you? Well, here we go then guys, Ginger has dropped his rig, but someone else has discarded some line in the tree and Ginger's boat has got stuck in it. Hi right, guys, so um, we got Ginger's boat back successfully in the end, but uh, he's winding in one of his other rods and tangled up in more rigs and line tackle hanging from the trees. 
Well, obviously it's not Ginger's fault because professional. Exactly. But whose fault it is are people who cast into a tree and pull for a break. Oh, in my eyes, that is bad angling. So what we got here, we we've we given the bailiff a shout. He's going to go and get the boat and go and get rid of all that line and snags and tackle hanging from the trees. And you'll find on most fisheries, they'll happily do that rather than leave tackle in trees. Because no fishery owner wants tackle rigs and whatnot hanging from trees, dangling into water where it could snag up fish. So, uh, I'll tell you, Andy's going to get the boat, he's going to get rid of all that. So whoever was in this swim before, or potentially from the looks of all their lines, a few people, or one person very bad, has left several rigs hanging from trees, and that is just bad angling. Because, like I say, we've given Andy a shout, he's going to go and get the boat, and he's going to get rid of all that tackle. So, if you're at a fishery, guys, and they've got a boat, and they're going to go out on it, Give them a shout, don't pull for a break and leave tackle in the trees. That's just bad angling. Because what happens is guys who can fish, like us, <laughs> you know, you, we put rigs in what we think are good spots and there's lost oh, tackle that Swans. hanging from trees. And as we see, we've got swan life now heading this way. That can also potentially get tangled up in that kind of end tackle. So, yeah, just a little bit of a rant, guys. I don't normally have a rant in my blogs, but when you've got end tackle like this hanging from trees and you're at a fishery that are happy to go out and retrieve lost tackle from trees, do that. Don't pull for brakes, guys. Well, if there's some leaders on there, I'm going to see if he'll give them to me. I'm going to invite him to get some tackle there. Always thinking of free tackle. <laughs> Here we go then, guys. So, Andy has come in. And like any good fishery would, is removing all that line from the trees which has snagged up Ginger's rig. My rig's clear. Oh. And if it's some bad audio guys, I do apologise. There's a big old tractor in the field right behind us doing some work. But yeah I mean this guys this is what you call good fishery management. You, know, you, you alert uh, them to lost rigs and tackle in the trees and they come and sort it straight away. Right, good evening guys. <clears throat> uh, just to better get the rods back out for obviously going into the second night. Um, Rods at this point in the session have probably been wound in for a couple of hours. Um, I had to wind in anyway, sort of late in the afternoon, obviously, to go and use the toilet. Mother Nature has a cause. And then uh, when I finished doing that, I just didn't put the rods back out. Uh, you know, we saw that incident where Ginge got his rigs you know, all snagged up in other people's snapped off line and, you know, so we you know, kind of dealing with that and then just wandering around having a bit of a chat and, and then we've just been up the local chip shop and had fish and chips, believe it or not. But, uh, but yeah, just about to do the rods again. Um, chatting to another regular here um, this afternoon and he, he was saying, um, sort of, Whites do work here, but he was saying also baits along the kind of the red spectrum of colour, he said, tend to do well. So, 
you know, so your, your pinks, your oranges, your kind of your dark reds and that kind of thing, so. But I have kept one rod on a white hook bait. I haven't changed the rigs, we're still on um, IQD rigs or, you know, fluorocarbon D rigs. But I've changed um, two of the rods to uh, pink dumbbell wafters. The older Mystic Plum, so um, that's all I really had in me in me bait bag along that kind of colour kind of level. So uh, right, right. Anyway, I've also been told or advised, not told, you know, but advised, don't go so close to the um, tree line. Uh, come out a rod length off it because the fish near at the moment with the water levels apparently tend to be more about a rod length off the tree line rather than close to the margin so so that's what I'm going to do so I'm still going to use my pole you know to put the rig in and to put the bait out with the pole and everything but you know I'll, I'll just go one section short of putting it all together to put the rigs out with Right, anyway, let's crack on and do that before too long. It's going to be dark and I'm going to be able to see what I'm doing, so... Uh... Right, anyway, let's crack on with that end, guys. <laughs> right then, guys, bit of a change of plan on one of the rods. I'm going to go the inside margin on one of my rods, so that'll be the right-hand rod. So I'm going to put up this margin, just an underarm flick. Why are you doing that? Because I want to. No, yeah. Because Keith is chatting to someone and saying that the right hand margin is good to go in this swim. Yeah, but Keith's lying. Anyway, I'm going to do that anyway, guys, so that will aid getting one of the rods out a little bit quicker with losing the light, so. Crack on. What you got there, mister? That's been said before. Hi right, guys, that is it. The three rods out now for the second evening. Not before time though, as you can see, it's getting dark now, so I've done my bit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, cheers Jin. Anyway, yeah, not before time. So I've done my bit, down to the fish to do their bit now. Uh, hopefully we get one. It has been really slow. But thanks, Keith. Uh, we've chatted to a few anglers around the lake, and they've all um, same story all around the lake. Everyone's struggling, so the lake's definitely not on form, from what we understand. Right here we go, then, guys. Last time we saw Ginge, way back in March at Willow Park Fishery. He was top he rod. Was top rod. And, and at the again. moment, he's top rod again. <laughs> Let's have a little zoom in on that one. There we go. This might be the only fish of the session, like last time. <laughs> it is tough fishing, and it could be. Right. Spin you around. I'm down. At least at Willow, they were bigger. Hey, it's a fish. Yeah. Well, I'll take a five pounder if it saves a blank at the moment. Well, you're on a blank session anyway. <laughs> there we go. 
Right, here we go, let's have a little zoom in on him. That's it, just zoom in so we don't see Ginger's face. Yeah. There we go, rig bait. Pacific tuna, two little 10 mils, uh, bottom bait, just, in, just across the margin on my right hand rod. Well happy with that one. <laughs> yeah, it's a blank saver. Exactly. How many more pictures do you need for your um, front cover? <laughs> we'll take a picture in a minute. <laughs> All right. Well done, mate. Cheers. Right then, guys. It's just shy of five o'clock in the morning. And he's only just gone and done it again, hasn't he? Oh, warm southwesterly blowing. I fished in like that. <laughs> Hang on. Get some better head on pictures in a minute, Keith, when I'm out of the way. There we go. Oh, it's a little common. Yeah. Did a little bit of a run around, but it's all right at five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. What are you getting up for? And it's a fish. Yeah, second one. Yeah, well, I was awake anyway, because I'd been woken up anyway with my middle rod having a bit of a liner, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll le not play with it this time. <laughs> It's about time you lot start catching up, I think. Well, we wanted you to catch fish first. Yeah. We well, can't call this the gin show, can you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, nice Still one, common. you jammy bugger. <laughs> Cheers. Good morning, guys. And, well, for me, unfortunately, it was another blank night. But, uh... At least the blog isn't blank now, now that Ginger's had a couple, so, uh, so well done Ginge. I'm sure we'll never hear the end of it, like Ginge does, he'll always let us know that he saved the blog. <laughs> but yeah, I had a couple of liners last night guys, um, as I said last night when Ginge had, um, I think it was, was it his first fish? Yeah, when he had his first fish. Um, I was awake anyway because I'd had a quite a savage line on the middle rod that had woke me up anyway. And then again early hours of the morning on the same rod, another quite big liner as well. So so I definitely fish mooch around my area. Unfortunately, on this occasion of not being successful at tripping any of them up. As I said at the start of the blog, I've never fished this lake before, so I don't know the going tactics or anything. So I've, I've kind of just relied on a couple of locals' information to, of what to go on. It's always a good starting point, but, you know, unfortunately, at the moment, we're not finished yet, you know. I've still got to the time it takes me to finish cooking my bacon and then eat it. To, a pack up yet, but the way it's been going, I'm not gonna hold my breath, guys. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, we, we haven't fished since Willow Park back in March, just before the lockdown started. So, you know, it's always good to meet up with mates who haven't seen for a while. Well, anyway, guys, must be bacon just about ready, so I'm gonna call it a day there, and hopefully, maybe in the last hour or so one of these fish might trip up. Right guys, unfortunately that is it. And unfortunately, again, Ginger's top rod. And I'm sure we'll never hear the end of it for a while that Ginger's well, saved the blog again. We'll be an apocalypse before we... <laughs> right, anyway guys, unfortunately for me personally, it has been a blank. I have tried my hardest. So, I mean, I, I did take on the local knowledge of two local anglers. I can't do more than that. And it still didn't work for me, unfortunately. Blankety blank. We'll be back again. I will next time bring a bait with me that is more suited to this water, I think, which is the uh, the Hinders um, River Army, which is very similar to what the house bait is. Probably be next year, I reckon, now. But anyway, Episode guys. Free, free, free. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this blog. 
and um, till next time when I will be at Wilford Pools for 48 hours. Uh, till then guys, tight lines. <laughs>